The second round of the 1955 Formula One World Championship took place in Monaco, where the narrow streets of the Principality once again became the stage for one of the most iconic races in motorsport. The Monaco Grand Prix marked the European debut of the championship that year, following the intense season opener in Argentina. Juan Manuel Fangio, fresh off a brilliant victory in Buenos Aires, arrived at the Principality as the championship leader. With the pressure mounting and the prestige of Monaco in the balance, the Argentine hoped to secure his second win on this legendary circuit, cementing his dominance early in the season. Between the Argentine and Monaco Grand Prix, another famous and dangerous race unfolded on the Italian roads, the Mila Miglia. Sterling Moss, driving for Mercedes-Benz alongside his navigator Dennis Jenkinson, emerged victorious in a race that shattered records and left a lasting mark on motorsport history. The duo, piloting their powerful 300 SLR, crossed the finish line an astonishing 32 minutes ahead of their teammate, Juan Manuel Fangio. The triumph, however, came with a reminder of the immense dangers that defined racing in the 1950s. The Mila Miglia, notorious for its perilous mix of professional teams and amateur drivers, claimed the lives of two competitors and a spectator. In addition, 15 others, including 11 children, were severely injured. It was a chilling testament to the extreme risks that racers and fans alike faced in these legendary high-speed marathons across public roads. The Daimler-Benz team entered the 1955 Monaco Grand Prix with high hopes, despite being slightly reduced in strength. Their usual quartet of drivers was down to three, as Carl Kling was still recovering from injuries sustained during the Miller Milia just three weeks earlier. Nevertheless, the team was determined to dominate the twisting streets of Monaco with their innovative Mercedes W196 cars. For this challenging circuit, the team opted for open-wheel configurations once again, as they had in Argentina. However, this time, Juan Manuel Fangio and Sterling Moss were given a new, shortened wheelbase version of the 196. The design saved significant weight by forgoing the inboard front brakes, moving them directly to the wheel hubs. This modification gave the cars more agility on the tight and narrow streets of Monaco, making them perfectly suited for the circuit's endless corners. Scuderia Ferrari underwent notable changes in its driver lineup. After impressing in the season opener, American Harry Shell was promoted to the main squad, joining veterans Nino Farina and Maurice Trintignant as part of the Scuderia's formidable trio. In a strategic move, Ferrari also entered a fourth car, but the seat wasn't immediately assigned. The choice was between two candidates, Piero Taruffi, who had driven for Ferrari in 1951 and 52, and Belgian newcomer Paul Frere. The decision on who would claim the fourth seat would be determined during the practice sessions. The Lancia team arrived at Monaco with a strong four-driver lineup, including a special edition. Alongside their primary drivers, Lancia brought in Monaco's own veteran, Louis Chiron, as a guest driver. Chiron, already a legend in the Principality, was eager to perform well on his home streets, adding a local flair to the team's efforts. The Lancia D50 cars also underwent minor but crucial design updates for the challenging circuit. The oil radiators were repositioned to the open areas between the body and the fuel tanks, a move that significantly improved cooling efficiency. This adjustment was particularly vital given the tight, twisting nature of the Monaco circuit, where keeping the cars cool was always critical. The only English factory team to participate in the Monaco Grand Prix was Tony Vandervelle's outfit. At the helm of the van wall was Englishman Mike Hawthorne, who had recently made the switch from Scuderia Ferrari to the British team. The team's return to the championship marked a significant step in the ongoing battle between British engineering and the dominant continental powers. The 1955 Monaco Grand Prix weekend wasn't only buzzing with motorsport anticipation, it was also a hotspot of glamorous social life. A real sensation was caused by Hollywood actress Bella Darby, the star of the races, who attended the event at the personal invitation of Prince Rainier. 
Her presence added a touch of Hollywood sparkle to the already prestigious gathering of drivers and enthusiasts. In terms of racing, the organizers introduced their own distinctive rules for qualifying, mirroring what had been done in 1950. To ensure safety, only 20 drivers were allowed to start the race, and in a bid to attract more spectators, the pole position was determined based on the first day of qualifying. These regulations ensured that every practice session became a fierce competition. Thursday's qualifying session saw Mercedes-Benz drivers, Juan Manuel Fangio and Sterling Moss, dominate the timesheets, showcasing the sheer pace of the Silver Arrows on the narrow, challenging circuit. The only real contender to their supremacy was Alberto Ascari, who was flying in his Lancia. Ascari's teammate, Eugenio Castellotti, surprised many by claiming fourth, marking a significant improvement after his lacklustre performance in Argentina. The Ferrari team, however, was struggling to find pace. Maurice Trintignant managed ninth, but Nano Farina was down in 14th and Harry Schell, driving the much-hyped new Super Squalo Ferrari 555, could only muster 18th. Adding an interesting twist to the weekend, Rudolf Uhlenhaut, the chief designer behind the W196 and the iconic Mercedes-Benz 300 SL, took to the track in a long chassis Mercedes. Uhlenhaut wasn't merely along for the ride, he was determined to understand firsthand the intricacies of the circuit and any complaints from his drivers. Incredibly, during testing, Uhlenhaut surpassed even the time set by Fangio, showcased not just his technical genius, but his remarkable driving skill. Race day in Monaco dawned with perfect weather, the skies clear, and the Mediterranean sun illuminating the narrow streets of the Principality. The excitement in the air was palpable as the crowd, packed into every available viewing space along the twisting circuit, awaited the start of the prestigious Monaco Grand Prix. In a traditional gesture of pomp and ceremony, Prince Rainier himself took to the track just before the start, driving a lap of honour in his sleek sports car. The Prince, a proud figurehead of Monaco's connection to the world of motorsport, led the pre-race festivities his presence adding to the grandeur of the event. With the lap complete, the stage was set for one of the most challenging races on the Formula One calendar to begin. So, the stage is set as the drivers prepare to tackle 100 gruelling laps around the narrow streets of Monaco. Ladies and gentlemen, the Monaco Grand Prix is about to begin. Fangio launched off the line with a flawless start gaining a crucial lead on the narrow streets of Monaco. Close behind him were Castellotti, Moss and Ascari, all charging through saint devote in hot pursuit. Moss clings to the tail of Castellotti, determined to find a way past. However, the young Italian proves to be a master of defence, skillfully manoeuvring his Lancia to thwart every attempt Moss makes to overtake. But on lap five, Moss finally seizes the opportunity. With a daring move, he dives into a tight corner, skillfully manoeuvring his Mercedes past the Italian. The crowd erupts as Moss reclaims second place. Castellotti, caught off guard, tries to respond, but finds it difficult to match Moss's pace as the Englishman sets his sights on catching the leader, Fangio. Musso's race takes a turn for the worse as he experiences transmission problems, forcing him to pull into the pits. With frustration etched on his face, he realizes that his chance to compete in the Grand Prix has come to an abrupt end. On lap 10, a gripping three-way battle for third place ignites between Ascari, Castellotti and Bera. Ascari, sensing an opportunity, launches an aggressive attack on his young teammate Castellotti, deftly manoeuvring his Lancia past the Italian. After five laps of struggle, Castellotti swiftly retaliates against Ascari, reclaiming the coveted third place with a daring manoeuvre. 
The Italian's quick thinking opens the door for Bera, who has been lurking just behind, ready to seize any opportunity. The Frenchman darts past both Castellotti and Ascari, decisively asserting himself in the battle for the podium. The tension is palpable as the crowd roars in approval of this exhilarating display of racing prowess. Hawthorne's fight is brought to an abrupt end when the throttle linkage on his van wall fails. The Englishman, unable to maintain pace, is forced to limp into the pits, signalling the end of his race. Moss finds a rhythm, pushing his Mercedes to the limit and driving several laps faster than Fangio. With each turn, he inches closer to the Argentinian, reducing the gap and reigniting hopes of a challenge for the lead. The intense three-way battle for third place comes to an abrupt end for Castellotti. Pushing hard to keep up with Ascari and Berra, he makes a costly mistake, clipping a curb and damaging his tyre. Forced to slow down, the young Italian pulls into the pits at the end of the lap. His mechanics quickly spring into action, replacing the damaged wheel and refueling the car in one swift motion. Despite the rapid pit stop, Castellotti loses valuable time and falls back in the race. On lap 41, Fanjo clocking an impressive 1 minute 42.4 and setting a new track record for the race. Bearer's strong run in third place takes a sudden downturn as engine trouble strikes. The Frenchman is forced to turn into the pits at the end of the lap. The situation worsens when it becomes clear that the issue is more serious than expected. To Bearer's frustration, the repair drags on for over two and a half minutes. By the time the mechanics finish, the Frenchman has dropped down to 11th place. On lap 43, Fanjo and Moss catch up with the slower Maserati debutante, Cesare Perdisa, who is about to be lapped. The Italian rookie boldly blocks their advances as he clings to his position on the track, despite being a lap down. Fanjo skillfully maneuvers past Perdisa, leaving the Maserati rookie behind. However, Perdisa continues to block Moss, frustrating the Englishman as he loses precious time to his Argentine teammate. Eventually, Moss forces his way past, but the damage has been done. After the race, an exasperated Moss reportedly reminded the young Italian, you should try using your mirrors once in a while. But Fanjo's race came to a sudden and dramatic end at the station hairpin when his Mercedes ground to a halt with a broken transmission. With his car unable to continue, Fanjo climbed out, his hopes of victory dashed. His misfortune, however, opened the door for his teammate Sterling Moss, who took over as the new leader, now carrying Mercedes' hopes of victory. Mir is launched a bold attack on Trintignant for third place, successfully passing the Frenchman and securing the position. However, his triumph was short-lived. Shortly after overtaking, Mir has suffered a sudden transmission failure, forcing him to slow down dramatically. With no resistance, Trintignant effortlessly reclaimed third place. On lap 76, Jean Berra found his rhythm. He executed a clean maneuver, overtaking Villaresi to claim fifth place. As the race progressed, Alberto Ascari found himself facing a critical issue. His brakes began to malfunction. The once reliable braking system became unpredictable, leaving the Italian driver in a precarious position. Each corner became a gamble, heightening the drama of the race as the two-time world champion fought to maintain his position amidst the mechanical chaos. On lap 81, a thick plume of smoke erupted from beneath the bonnet of Moss's Mercedes signaling a catastrophic engine failure. The heart of his silver arrow had given out, spewing oil across the hot exhaust pipes. Realizing the severity of the situation, Moss swiftly steered into the pits, his hopes for glory extinguished in an instant. This was yet another cruel twist in a career marked by near misses, leaving fans and team alike in stunned silence. As the crowd watched in stunned disbelief, the focus shifted dramatically to a different corner of the circuit, the harbour area. 
Alberto Ascari's Lancia experienced a catastrophic brake failure as he approached the harbour area. The brakes locked up, sending the car veering uncontrollably to the left. Ascari's machine crashed into a wall of straw bales before careening over the barrier and plunging into the deep blue sea. Moments later, Ascari's head broke the surface and relief washed over the crowd. The divers quickly retrieved the shaken Italian and placed him onto a rescue boat, ferrying him back to the shore where an ambulance awaited. But it soon became apparent that the only mark left by the harrowing incident was a small cut on his nose. With the retirements of both Moss and Ascari, Maurice Trentignon unexpectedly found himself in the lead, ready to seize an opportunity that had seemed improbable mere moments before. Farina launched an aggressive attack on Villaresi for fourth place. He outmaneuvered the Italian driver, slipping past him with deft ease. Bera misjudged his line on the curve leading into Casino Turn. His Maserati spun out of control and collided with the barrier, sending a shockwave through the crowd. As the dust settled, it was clear that Bera's race was over. Padisa launched a daring attack on Villaresi, quickly overtaking him in the battle for fourth position. But the Italian wasn't done yet. Fueled by adrenaline, he continued to push forward, closed the gap to Farina. Padisa executed a precise maneuver, slipping past him to snatch third place. As the checkered flag waved, Maurice Trintignant crossed the finish line first. Unexpectedly for both himself and his team, the Frenchman clinched victory at the Monaco Grand Prix, marking a remarkable achievement in his racing career. In a historic moment for motorsport, Maurice Trintignant not only claimed victory at the Monaco Grand Prix, but also became the first Frenchman to win a World Championship Grand Prix. With this triumph, he ascended to the top of the overall standings, overtaking the legendary Juan Manuel Fangio. The race also showcased the impressive performances of two Italian debutantes, Eugenio Castellotti and Cesare Perdisa, who secured second and third places respectively, demonstrating their skill on the treacherous Monaco circuit. Notably, Perdisa shared his podium points with John Vera, further emphasizing the chaotic and unpredictable nature of the race. Nino Farina managed to finish fourth despite a challenging race marked by a forced pit stop on the opening lap, while Luigi Villaresi rounded out the points in fifth place, spending much of the race in the shadows of his more dominant teammates. Just four days after the exhilarating Monaco Grand Prix, Alberto Ascari arrived to Monza to watch Castellotti test a Ferrari 750 sports car for the upcoming 1,000-kilometer Monza race. Although Ascari was not scheduled to drive that day, he decided to take a few laps, donning street clothes and Castellotti's white helmet. On his third lap, as he exited a fast curve, the car suddenly skidded, flipped onto its nose and somersaulted twice. The horrific crash unfolded at the notorious Curva del Vialone, a high-speed corner known for its challenges. Ascari was thrown from the vehicle, sustaining multiple injuries that proved fatal within minutes. In the aftermath of this tragic event, the corner where the accident occurred was renamed in his honor, becoming the Variante Ascari, a lasting tribute to one of motorsport's brightest stars, whose life was cut short far too soon. Ascari's legacy remains a poignant reminder of the dangers inherent in the world of racing, even for its most skilled and celebrated drivers.